Kaylee and I live in Puerto, but a lot of people ask us, why don't you guys just move to Gaia? It's basically the same, but it's cheaper. I'm Josh. And I'm Kaylee, and we're Expats Everywhere, the channel all about living abroad and the experiences that await you. Now let's take a look at Gaia and see if you could live here. Gaia is its own municipality in the north of Portugal and on the south side of the Douro River across from Porto. The area is quite large with the river, port wine, and beaches. The city has seen both Roman and Moorish rule and it's no secret that it is in a great location being right on the river. There are a couple of museums and galleries around to learn more about the history of Gaia, but let's jump ahead and show you what this city looks like nowadays. Whether you're visiting or living in Gaia, you'll definitely want to experience the many wine cellars, port wine houses, or even the recently opened World of Wine. Grab a meal or drink along the water. This is something that is more touristy, but even if you live here, it's wonderful to head here every once in a while to take in the views. Speaking of views, you have to head up by Meridoro da Serra do Pilarto, and excuse my pronunciation, to see a view of Gaia, the river and across the river into Porto. Nearby, there's also the beautiful Jardim do Moro. Gaia also has a few other parks and gardens around for those who want to relax or take their kids for a run around. There is a metro line that runs from the Porto side and has a few stops along Avenida da Repubblica, which is one of the most happening streets in Gaia. We'll chat more about this area in a second. Although the metro comes across the bridge and has a few stops, it doesn't cover everywhere in Gaia because Gaia is so spread out. There are future plans for more lines, but for now there are also plenty of buses. There are a variety of private schools in Gaia, and then of course you have some big international schools just across the bridge in Porto, but you'll probably need to take your kids there by car. The Douro River is definitely a symbol of both Porto and Gaia, and there's actually a massive debate on which side has the better view. We're gonna leave that up to you guys to decide. There are six bridges here that connect the two cities, and it's just so amazing to enjoy all of them. So let's get to Avenida Republica, where you'll find a ton of lively shops and the El Corte Inglés. Now, we recommend people to come to El Corte Inglés when they're looking for specific goods from their home country. You can definitely find them here. And you can spend practically all day here because of the many floors. There are things from a grocery store to clothing to electronics to kids toys and the list goes on and on. And actually, I come here when I'm looking for something really specific. For example, for Americans for Thanksgiving, I wanted uh, canned cranberries, so I came here. And I didn't find exactly what I was looking for, but I found something really similar that was good. Something that I wouldn't be able to find in a normal shop here. But of course, Gaia is not only about El Corte Inglés. It's a great place to check out though, and you won't want to miss what's going on on this whole street. Maybe this will be a location you would like to live by as it has more of a city feel. The prices definitely vary around the municipality, but if you want to be close to this area and the historic center, expect to pay anywhere from 700 to 1200 euros to rent T2. As you head out of some of these more popular areas, but not too remote, the prices are closer to 600 to 900 euros. We're standing in front of the EDP, which is who you pay your utilities through. Now in Gaia, the winters can get a bit cold, so keep that in mind when you think about budgeting for your utilities because it depends on how much you want to run your heat and how old your place is. So you probably want to budget between 100 to 150 euros a month for utilities just in case. Obviously, they will be lower in the summer and it all depends on how much energy you use on a personal level. Now, because of all the hills, it is possible to find a property for sale with a view. If you see these right here, these are gonna have a view of the river. Now, normally you would pay extra for something like that, but hey, there's so many hills, there's so many views, you might be able to find a deal. The city is becoming more popular with a lot of new builds. These are more expensive. Expect to pay a minimum of 150,000 euros for a T2 new build. If you want something older that needs updating, then you might be able to find something for 80,000 to 100,000 euros. Already renovated T2s are starting around 100,000 euros. Real estate in Gaia right now is quite good value. 
Obviously, location, size, and amenities will fluctuate the price as well. The average temperatures in the winter get down to the low 40s, with the highs sometimes getting into the low 60s, but normally staying in the 50s. Winter is rainy season here, so you will get rain. The summer months generally stay in the 70s for the highs, and the high 50s to low 60s for the lows, but that's generally through the night. Since Gaia is in the north of Portugal, you don't get super hot summers, so it's pleasant to sit along the river and it's not too bad walking up and down the hills, although we've broken a sweat walking around. Well, we've talked about the river and we've talked about the lively part of the city around Avenida da Republica, but the great thing about Gaia is there are also beaches along the Atlantic here. Walk along the boardwalk, lay out, or get in the chilly water if you dare. You can even visit a chapel built on rocks. It's possible to live down a small windy road in Gaia. Do remember there are hills, so if you have a hard time walking or just don't like to walk too much, this city might not be for you. Depending on what little side street you're on will depend on how close a grocery store is, but small stores are everywhere, and of course, you have bigger stores on Avenida da Repubblica. Gaia is quite big, but is connected by bus. If you are okay with walking and public transportation, you could live here without a car, but if that's not for you, then you might want a car. If you would prefer to not have a car, then you don't want to live too far away from the river where you see Porto across the way. Also plan to live near a metro stop or bus stop so you don't have to walk those hills if you don't want to. Because Gaia is so spread out, you will definitely have different vibes around the municipality. You can choose to live in a smaller, more Portuguese location if that's the type of lifestyle you're seeking. Well, Josh and I are right across the river from Gaia, so it's quite accessible to us, but could we live here? Let's go talk about it. Okay, so let's talk to you guys about what we think of Gaia. Me first? You first. Okay, I think Gaia, for one, is super spread out, and I know we've mentioned that, yeah. but it's hard to kind of put Gaia in a, this is what the feel or the vibe of the city is like because it is so big and there are different pockets that feel differently. Like we showed you Avenida de Republica, which is kind of city feeling. Then you have down by the river, which is a little more relaxed. And then now you have out of the beach. So it just has a lot to offer living in different parts of it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, land area, it's something like the third largest in Portugal. So it's that spread out, right? Mm -hmm. So I really like coming down by the beach, but if you're gonna be down by the beach, you absolutely need a car. Yes. And I really don't want a car, so that's why I find a place like Matazinhos to be a bit more livable. That's true. Mm -hmm. So definitely a car down by the beach. If you're up uh, near ha Avenida de Republica, you could do without a car, and absolutely. that's easier for grocery shopping as well. I think when you get outside of that little area, it gets quite hilly, uh, so you'll want a car, and the grocery stores are much smaller. So you have to kind of take that into consideration. If you're not down in the main area, then the car would probably be a better idea for grocery shopping, especially because there aren't as many stores nearby, right? Now, another great thing to mention is a habit of shopping. Mm. So a habit of shopping is also attached to a hospital too. Uh, Hospital da Luz, I believe, mm -hmm. is how it's called, da Luz. Mm -hmm. uh, Something like that. I'm like, uh -huh. yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> you so, say it, not so me. So <laughs> you've, you've, you've got that there as well. So if you're wanting a good hospital in Gaia, hopefully you don't need one, but if you're wanting one and that security, it's there. The shopping has everything, all of the big stores, it's there. Again, you can access it by, by bus, mm -hmm. but you probably want a car. You want a car to take home all the things that you just bought. Now, if you want to be in Gaia without a car, then that's when I think being closer to Avenida Republica Probably. and the river would be a, a better option, I guess. And actually, I'm really impressed with this side of the river. I think it does way better than the Porto side. The Hibera side is still kind of old with just kind of cafes and restaurants, and that's really it. But over on the Gaia side, they've got a lot going on. More newer buildings, I guess, for restaurants that are a little raised. They've got the yeah. cable car. They've got different like pop-up tents with, you know, you can buy jewelry or or anything like that. So there's just a lot going on on the river side of Gaia, which I think is actually better than Porto. Yeah, I would agree with that. That stretch along the river is just bigger. I mean, there's more offerings. There's shops and restaurants and things. 
it's just more. It's more than Hibera. It's really nice. And then, of course, you have the port houses and the world of wine is that has really impressed me. Uh, how nice it is, how well they've done with that. The yeah. museums, the the food, the, the, the bathroom. They have a whole section for kids, which is really great with those needing to change kids. So I, I was very impressed with Only that. Only Kaylee would champion the bathrooms <laughs> the bathroom of places. Place. But yeah. I mean, yeah, look at it. If you're talking about some of the, the touristy bits of Gaia, yeah, if you're living there, you might want to get involved in that type of thing. I've actually thought, like just being on the Porto side, that it would be nice to come over and spend the day over because of the gardens. I mean, close to where the metro runs would be easiest, but the gardens and there's just a lot of lot going on there that could be nice. All right, so you're talking quite positively about am, it. So I'm yeah. going to ask you the question, would you expat that? I would say yes, I would expat that, but I would only expat near Avenida da Republica and the river area right in there, which I know is kind of touristy, but there are still a lot of fun things that you could do if you wanted to, but you could be a little bit off the beaten path and not be by all the tourists as well. So I would not expat the beach area where we are now, but I would expat the city-ish area. What about you? Yeah, uh, I guess if I had to, if I had to follow you and tag along, <laughs> I would. I, I don't know if I would necessarily choose to. Mm. Um, I just prefer Porto. I prefer Matzazinhos over Gaia because uh, Matzazinhos is, is more walkable, manageable by foot. That's don't true. want a car. Uh, agree with you about the Avenida thing, but it's up for you guys to decide. And if you want to check out more places here in Portugal, please do hit that playlist right there that you see. You can check that out. And if you want to see how we did everything to get the D7 visa, then you can do this playlist over here. Now let's get moving. Bye. Bye.